I want to introduce our guest, Mary Pat Angelini. I'm so excited, Mary Pat, to have you here. We've met several times. I believe in what you're, you're doing and your team is doing. And I want to just real quick let you introduce yourself. Then we're going to go to a break and come back with some questions. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Um, this is a wonderful opportunity. Um, so many things are going through my head right now that I want to get back to. So I know we're short before the break. But, um, you know, I'm as you mentioned, I'm a, a mom. I'm a a wife, a grandmother, oh, most wow. proudly, uh, of three grandchildren. No kidding. And in part, that's why I got involved in politics, because I said I cannot stand by any longer and see what's happening to the, the state that I love. And um, it was timing is everything, as they say in politics, and there was an opportunity. And um, I progressed through the, uh, the system that was set up in our, our party to, mm -hmm. to get to the uh, ultimate nomination. And now I am currently in my second term as a New Jersey Assembly woman, cool. and I represent the 11th district, which mm -hmm. in, com is comprised of 25 towns throughout Monmouth County, pretty okay. much all along the shore. You know, if, you know, looking at a map of Monmouth County. So you got the beach. I got the beautiful beach, and I say <laughs> we have the we have the prettiest. Uh, prettiest district of all. Absolutely. Well, I'm shocked to hear, Mary Pat, that you're a grandma. Uh, you look great, and uh, we appreciate you coming out with us today. We're going to be taking a break uh, in a minute, and uh, when we come back from the break, we'll be talking about uh, Mary Pat and what she's been doing and uh, in not only politics, but of course the business of running a not-for-profit. She has a prevention first, which we're going to talk about and other things. And um, uh, we're excited to have you here at Tandem Radio. And again, if you're tuned in, don't forget tandemradio.com. You can find out a lot about us and what's going on and blogs and so forth. But write down 800-575-9564. That's 800 800- 575-9564. We will be taking phone calls a little later, and we'll be back after the break with Mary Pat Angelini, Assemblywoman from the 11th District here in New Jersey. Welcome back to Tandem Radio. This is your host, Glenn DeLakin, along with Peter Grandich, and we're here with our special guest, Mary Pat Angelini. Pete, did you have something you wanted to say? Yes, following our, our little uh, commercial uh, break for Athletes in Action, I'd just like to bring attention to the fact that uh, we will be, uh, I don't have the exact date, so if you go to tandemradio.com and hit the link to Athletes in Action, you'll see we're hosting an event in North Jersey with Yankee pitcher Andy Pettit, mm -hmm. and it's free. Wow. So go to the tandemradio.com uh, website and hit the Athletes in Action uh, link, and it should give you details about that. Andy is a, a really devout Christian who, you know, who who recently has been involved in some things, you know, both on and off the field, mm -hmm. and he's going to share his testimony, which is a powerful one. I've heard it before. Oh, that's great to know. Well, we deliver, we, our goal is to bring you all types of unique insights here at Tandem Radio, and uh, we hope you take the time to listen each Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I want to say hello to our national listeners. We do get a lot of emails from folks at uh, Chicago, Florida, uh, California, and just mentioned that they listened on the Internet. And hopefully we'll be on a radio station near you soon. But our guest today is Mary Pat Angelini. And uh, Mary Pat, we're talking about, obviously, you're involved in business, you're involved in politics, you're involved in being a mom, a grandma, all that stuff. Um, you know, I had heard one, a long time ago that life is like juggling three balls. You have business, you have religion, and you have family. And they said the rubber, the uh, fa the business and the um, religion are rubber balls, and the family ball is a crystal ball. So you got to make sure when you're juggling, there's one you never want to drop. But uh, I guess my first question for you, Mary Pat, is how do you do it all? Well, I, uh, no offense to the gentlemen listening, but I, I do think women are uh, better, you know, multitaskers. Um, but you know, certainly when I got, uh, you know, first got interested in the. The prospect of running for office, mm. I sat with my family and said, you know, how, you know, what do you think about this? Is this a good idea? How can we do this? I do have the, the luxury at the time, my son was uh, in college, my youngest, our youngest son was in college. Um, so, you know, we were kind of an empty nest mm. situation as it was. And, um, you know, my family was extremely supportive. And uh, I also had to sit down with my board of trustees because being a nonprofit, a, a charity, I have a I answer to a board of trustees and had to, you know, really get their support and they were very, very supportive as well. So I guess it was critical to get all your ducks in a row and exactly. uh, as the Bible says is there's a uh, wisdom in a multitude of counselors, check with everybody, right? Make sure that you're on track. Well, let's talk about prevention first for a second. I mean 
a lot of people don't really understand that a, a, a not-for-profit, especially as it gets bigger and bigger, is running a business in essence. You have employees, you have staff, you have all types of responsibilities. Why don't you tell us a little, about, a little bit about prevention first and then also what it's like to run a not-for-profit. Sure. Well, Prevention First was actually incorporated in 1967, uh-huh. and it was incorporated as the, um, the Council on Alcoholism, okay. um, and it actually served Monmouth, Ocean, and Middlesex County. And throughout the years, um, it was a very strong organization in Monmouth County, and it was through the advocacy efforts of some of the first board members that really some um, uh, rehabilitation centers that are still in existence today were started, such as New Hope Foundation. Oh, really? And... Um, but then as the years grew as any organization, you know, you go through ups and downs. And I became involved in 1992. I applied for the position of executive director. Okay. And they were actually looking at closing their doors because oh, wow. they had they'd lost their, their focus. They'd lost their mission. And um, they really were looking to kind of re, refocus. And I interviewed, and I was accepted as the executive director. And at the same time, if you remember, that was you know, a little bit after uh, Nancy Reagan, but it was Nancy Reagan who, you know, first brought up, you know, just say no. Oh, right, And, right. you know, that was really looking at, at, you know, kids stay away from drugs and, you know, you, it's not a good thing to get involved in. And many times, to this date even, you know, I think people don't remember that Betty Ford, who started the Betty Ford right, Clinic, right. and Nancy Reagan, you know, I mean, those are two good Republican Christian women mm-hmm. that really started the field that, that I'm so lucky to be in. but um, So basically what we do at Prevention First, our tagline is we teach children how to stay healthy, safe, and drug free. Okay. Um, we're very involved in bullying prevention, mm-hmm. which has unfortunately really become a, a, a very large issue when you look at all the cyber bullying and all the different ways now that, that kids can be mean to, to other kids. Right. And then also the the drug prevention. You know, mm-hmm. we teach we teach our, our the children really everything that we teach them can be you know uh, put into other categories. But we teach them skills as to how they can make good decisions and how they can avoid bad situations. Mary Pat, you know we're a show about business, and I'm curious. You, you've been doing this for quite a while. You're obviously also in politics, and so you know about for profit businesses. What have you seen, or what are the differences, if any, good or bad, the difference between running a nonprofit and a so-called for-profit business? Well, the difference is clearly any any funds, any profit that we make, it goes back into the agency to then continue our mission of keeping kids healthy, safe, and drug-free. Right. So everything has to be focused around that the mission. And the actually, other than that, there really is no difference. You know, I am held accountable to my funders. You know, we, mm. we're funded through um, some some public grant programs, but also program income, where we will go out and, and charge a small fee, but, you know, and then that money can come back to pay for the staff that goes out to provide the programs. Right. And then also we rely on fundraising, you know, the generosity of, of our community. Mm. And, again, that goes back to our board of trustees that is... The, the governing body of, of the agency. But, you know, I just went through a whole restructuring, um, and it was it was very difficult, but I actually had to lay some, some people off. So there's no difference. So, really. so when the economy goes bad, it, 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 and obviously, unfortunately, people tend to give less when the economy goes right. bad. We know that from church, and also the same happens for nonprofits. Exactly, exactly. What age group is uh, Prevention First uh, focused on? We focus on... Um, it, Primarily uh, high school and below, you know. Okay. In I mean, we do have some programs, some ancillary programs for college age children, kids, um, young adults, and then. Um, but yeah, the primary focus is pretty much between grade maybe three and four up to high school. It's amazing because you see how the the ages slipped lower and lower where you have to intervene because the kids are starting just at younger and younger ages. It's amazing. Exactly. The first use of, in New Jersey, the first use for alcohol, it's 11, 11 and a half years old. Right. So, I mean, that's very, very sad. The, the, uh, just real quick, uh, a friend of mine, we don't have to name him or what he does, but he's a former, you probably know it when I say it, he's a former uh, running back from the Jets, and he started a business where the high school kids mentor 
to elementary kids. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say the name. Zeros and Cool Kids is Bruce Harper, and he said in the last few years, the bullying situation has literally become epidemic, particularly because so much of it now is being done through the internet versus the old thing when we were afraid to go outside because Johnny was outside and he was right. going to kick my butt. But this has really become an, an epidemic. 